Hi, I'm Robert Dakota of Worldviews Media, and I'm here with Robert Bouval this morning, who is speaking to us from Spain. Robert is a best-selling author, arco-astronomer, and engineer. Robert's claim to fame is the discovery of the Orion Correlation Theory, which precisely matches the pyramids to the stars of Orion's belt. Robert will be our next guest speaker live with us in Sedona, Friday, May 27th at the Creative Life Center. Thank you, Robert. Can you share with us the title of the event and what the event will be about? Is Ancient Pyramid Builders, Modern Cosmology, and the Science of Immortality. And, and the reason um, that I chose this title is that I am presently uh, finishing, uh, well, in fact, I finished a book with Robert Schock uh, on the Sphinx and the Pyramids of Egypt, but particularly the Sphinx and the age of the Sphinx controversy. And I'm in the middle of a book that I'm writing with um, Professor Chandra Vikramasinghe. He is a, a cosmologist, an astrobiologist, uh, the proponent with uh, Fred Hoyle of the panspermia theory. And we got together to write a book called The Cosmic uh, Womb, which would be asking the big questions uh, regarding the origins of uh, the cosmos, the origins of life, and how the modern uh, physics and cosmology uh, relates, uh, seem to relate to ancient cosmologies such as the ancient Egyptians. So that's essentially uh, the core of my talk. Uh, regarding the, the, uh, the pyramids of Egypt, which I have been studying for the last 30 years. Uh, as uh, you know, Robert, I'm, uh, I'm known for the, um, developing the Orion correlation theory. Yes. That the three pyramids of Giza are a earthly uh, model, if you like, of the, um, of the three stars in Orion's belt. Uh, this theory has been debated over the last 30 years, and I'm pleased to say it has been... Uh, unable to be falsified by, uh, finally, by a university um, uh, and astrophysicists who have examined it uh, in detail. So the, the theory holds very well. Uh, the latest view uh, that I have on the pyramid, particularly the Great Pyramid, the, the pyramid of so-called King Cheops, uh, is that it exhibits two uh, very important uh, qualities. One is, of course, the astronomical qualities. It's obviously designed to, uh, to have astronomical input. It's uh, aligned to the four cardinal directions. It has shafts that point specifically to, to stars, and particularly Orion's belt. And it forms a pattern with the other two pyramids uh, representing Orion's belt. But it also has a mathematical um, quality, and, and that is very interesting, particularly in mathematics that deals with prime numbers. Uh, the number 11 and the number 7 is repeated uh, throughout the design of the pyramid. It's been studied, by the way, by my brother in great detail over the last 30 years. When you think of a, a monument or anything that exhibits astronomical qualities, giving a direction in the sky, and it also contains uh, prime numbers, uh, then uh, we're talking about a universal language here. The, the pyramid seems to be, quote-unquote, if you like, pulsating uh, with a message. And I truly believe that it is built for that purpose. It contains a code, if you like, or a message. I don't want to say what it might be. But I'm beginning to think that um, the, the science of immortality that is attached to this monument, uh, there is no doubt at all. We have texts that date from the 5th dynasty, which is the dynasty immediately after the, the, the building of the Giza pyramids, that speak very clearly of a kind of metamorphosis or a kind of uh, conversion of a physical body into some sort of spiritual entity to launch, literally to launch, into a star world. 
uh, Egyptologists, of course, uh, you know, poo-poo this as being some some uh, superstitious uh, nonsense. But the, the 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 scale of the monument, the precision of the monument, demands that we take this uh, more seriously. I'm getting the strong feeling. Uh, in fact, it's more than a feeling because of how much uh, I've been investigating this, uh, this structure. That the ancient Egyptians, or the ancient Egyptians, quote-unquote, astronomer priests, or whoever they were, who designed this structure, uh, were privy to a knowledge. Now, where does this knowledge come from is a huge question. But I suspect that they were able to dig inside themselves through some form of meditation, through some form of uh, inner brain ability. Uh, and hence why I'll also be talking about the latest information, the latest cutting-edge neuroscience that is coming out. Uh, we, I believe that each individual, each human, on this planet is a walking cosmos, living walking cosmos. Uh, it may sound weird um, to say it in this form, but uh, physicists and cosmologists are coming on the same conclusion because we're made of the same stuff as the universe and we have a brain uh, that contains some hundred billion neurons uh, controlling this, this mass of cells that themselves are being controlled by zillions and zillions of atoms and some atomic particles. We're literally a walking universe, but our brain consciously is only able to, to cull, to, to, to retrieve a very small amount of this information in our conscious state. But perhaps there is a state that is able to do so, and that's what I think the ancient Egyptians did. Hence the correlation that I'll be making in this talk with the latest cutting-edge quantum mechanics and the latest neuroscience findings. It's, it's kind of spooky science, but this is what's going on. And I firmly believe that there is another means to reach this knowledge, this, this built-in knowledge, without necessarily the use of technology. We're approaching it today with physicists and neurologists, with with technology, with scanners, with computers and digital uh, advancements, but not uh, using our own brain, if you like. But I suspect that perhaps the ancients did so. Hence, this is, in a nutshell, if you like, the subject of my talk that I'll be giving uh, in Sedona. Thank you so much for your time and, and taking the time to uh, share with us. We'll get this information out online and let everybody know that you're going to be here with us in Sedona soon. I look forward to it. I visited Sedona several years ago and I look forward to, to experience it again.